And then press the three dots. And the microphone. Yeah, okay? Yeah. All right. Right, thanks. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here uh, on this Sunday morning. Uh, today I can announce that the State Government is committed to uh, the strongest possible laws in the country to keep uh, firearms away from criminals and to ensure that when it comes to firearms, that community safety is always the paramount uh, consideration. Uh, with all te technological advances, uh, we have seen uh, uh, police apprehend more homemade 3D printed firearms. Um, these firearms, 3D printed firearms, are already illegal, uh, already prescribed, and already can see very, very serious penalties attached. What we've seen, though, is an evolution of uh, 3D printed, uh, 3D blueprints. Basically, a homemade recipe that that allows for the um, homemade manufacture of these very dangerous pieces of equipment. Uh, what I can say today and announce today is that we are drafting legislation to bring to the Parliament very shortly to uh, penalise the um, um, uh, possession of these blueprints. Uh, we do not want to see uh, a situation in this country like we do in others around the world, particularly the US and more and more like the UK, where uh, homemade 3D printed firearms are finding their way into the hands of criminals or organised crime. Uh, we do have a very fine balance here in this country. Uh, we uh, recognise the good work uh, and the safe work of responsible firearms uh, owners, particularly those in rural communities. But we as a government make absolutely no apology to have uh, harsh laws and strict penalties that keep uh, firearms off our streets. And we want to make sure that we get ahead of the curve when it comes to technology. So as we've seen, these use of 3D printers uh, in uh, settings uh, increase over time. We are committed to being ahead of the curve. Uh, only New South Wales and Tasmania at present have laws that contemplate this. So with the uh, uh, legislation that will soon be introduced into Parliament that will attach a 15 year imprisonment term uh, for the illegal uh, possession. Uh, we are very confident that we will continue to put community safety first and keep these uh, 3D printed firearms and more importantly the recipes to make them uh, out of the hands of crooks. Uh, I might just, if you don't mind, uh, add a couple of um, updates on some serious conditions in the Air Peninsula today with bushfires as well. We have a, a extreme uh, weather rating <coughs> excuse me, uh, on, the, on the Air Peninsula today. Uh, our CFS are, are stood up. They are in a um, uh, degree of operational preparedness. I don't want to project that there are um, um, undue concern. However, we do have uh, forward deployed aircraft uh, in the Air Peninsula ready for this situation. We have uh, uh, a number of fixed wing aircraft, uh, fire bombers. We also have our brand new Black Hawk um, helicopters and we also have an, aer an aerial observation uh, helicopter. Um, my message to communities, not only the Air Peninsula, but particularly around the state, as we see more and more uh, hot weather stick in, come in and stick around over the coming weeks, is to uh, be prepared. Um, put in place your bushfire survival plan where you can, but also uh, just take those five minutes now, today, to jump onto the CFS website to do your be bushfire ready plan so that uh, if or when a bushfire threatens your home, your community or your area, that you are ready. Uh, it is not okay to see uh, the uh, onset of a fire to, before you contemplate being ready. We see so many people in our community that fail to be prepared. Uh, now is the time to consider what you would do in the event that you or your community or your family are threatened uh, with a bushfire. SAPOL acknowledges that additive manufacturing, which includes 3D printing, is a growth industry for both legitimate and illegitimate uh, environments. 
The proposed legislation will seek to find that balance between legitimate uses of additive manufacturing and indeed the um, legitimate needs of professional and recreational firearms users, manufacturers and repairers, uh, and this emerging threat to public safety. SAPOL will support the bill to regulate the possession of blueprints to manufacture 3D printed firearms. And the purpose is to support public safety by preventing unfit people, and that includes the um, uh, criminal elements from possessing and manufacturing 3D printed firearms and firearm parts. We have investigated matters where 3D printing um, was evident. Since May 2020, there have been 23 incidents detecting 3D printed firearm activity and with the seizure of firearms and firearm parts. Um, and these matters are currently in various stages before the courts. This legislation is a continuous improvement approach to enable SAPOL to proactively disrupt um, activities by unfit people including the criminal element, as well as people who seek to tinker with this type of um, emerging technology. So 3D printed firearms often lack um, structural integrity, and that means that there could be catastrophic um, failures with the use of people who, who use these um, items. I'd like to encourage anybody who has any information on 3D printed firearms, the manufacturer of those, to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Operation Athena is a serious and organised crime coordination committee to deliver a multi-agency approach to elicit firearms use in Australia. We are working, um, South Australia Police are working with our partners all across Australia in relation to this emerging threat of 3D printed firearms. Of the 23 seizures mentioned, evident, um, and also firearms parts and indeed firearms themselves. And are they ordinarily hard copy or are we going to be seeing them online and how do you police that when it's online? Yeah, that's actually very challenging and that's why we're working hard with our partner agencies in relation to that new technology because it is evolving quite rapidly. So what are you seeing with the blueprints? Can you just describe the how people are accessing them generally? So they can be downloaded from the internet, it's not even the dark web um, and that's what makes this you know, very challenging. Um, it's very readily accessible uh, by the public. And yeah, how do you trace that back to who uploaded it and how do you trace that back to who is actually legally in possession of it? That's very challenging and we have experts within SAPOL who will work their way through that. And um, with these 23 seizures, is there a pattern? Is it linked to youth crime? Is it linked to gangs? Is it used in these smash and grabs with, that we're seeing as threatening weapons um, that are, you know, are potentially not real weapons, but um, yeah. There's, there's actually, so far in South Australia, there's actually no real trend. So the, these 23 incidents have been from people aged between 17 and 70, um, and only two of them were, were youths at the time, and it's been across metropolitan Adelaide and regional South Australia as well. Any others, anybody? All good? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I might go to the minister oh, sure. if we can. Yeah, thank you. Um, just regarding the uh, proposal or a motion being put forward with the Ethnic Council about sharp.